What's up everyone, my name is of course Tom and welcome to TechStream. Today, thanks to the guys over at Thermaltake, we're taking a look at their new Level 20 RGB keyboard. First of all though, as always, let's roll on that intro. So the Level 20 RGB gaming keyboard from Thermaltake. Um, we actually had a quick look at this at, um, well, actually Adam from Thermaltake popped over and he brought one of these with him. And uh, well, we had a quick look at it. So today he's actually sent me one over. This is for me to review. So here we go. Um, we're gonna be taking a lot more in-depth look at the actual keyboard, how it works, how the software works and things like that. So the Level 20, keyboard what is it well to start off with it's basically a full-size 104 key keyboard okay she's a weighty monster at one and a half kilos and it's got lots of RGB so we're gonna start off with sort of the obvious things so the actual keyboard I do have a load of b-roll which we will bring in as well but in the box you basically get a keyboard and some keycaps so you do actually get a keycap puller and some Spare red keys, red keycaps for your one, two, three, four, your uh, your Q, W, E, and R, and your A, S, D. Um, do I like these? Me personally, not my kind of thing. But you may want red keycaps on your keyboard. Personally, the best color I would have gone with would be like maybe a, a gold set or something like that. something a bit sort of not colored, if you get what I mean. So it's the sort of thing where you could still have all the RGB, but they do include some extra keycaps if you just want to be able to define a certain number of keys. So that is about it in the box. There's not a massive amount, but the actual keyboard itself has got lots of bells and whistles. So we'll take a quick look around the outside. So the obvious things about this are all the RGB. We do have a colored strip that runs literally down both sides and around the back. All of the keys are illuminated. We do have another strip down the middle here. There's actually a little split here. And when I first picked this up, I thought, hmm, taking a chunk out, is it gonna flex? No. This one and a half kilo monster has got no wiggle room or anything in it. So we do have standard layout, 104 keys. We've also got a few extra keys for uh, media keys. So we've got a nice volume scroller, a mute button, stop, pause, playing back. I like to see me, I like media keys. Um, a lot of keyboards, they do have the option to have it as a function and things like that. But no, we've got some dedicated media keys. Also got a button for changing the light intensity, which doesn't work because I'm running the software. Um, and there's also some function keys up by here where you can sort of either play with lights or uh, again, open things like your email, things like that. But on the whole, standard 104 key keyboard with lots of RGB. So what else do we have? We do have a six foot included cable. It is fixed, it's incredibly thick. And that is because on the other end of this, we have a pair of USBs, because we have a pass through. And then my one, one of my bugbears with this keyboard. This is a headset adapter, i.e. this is a three pole headset adapter. The sort of thing that your iPhone uses not your iPhone, they don't have headsets anymore. Samsung phones, things like that. The three pole where you have your headphones and microphone on a single lead. How many gaming headsets do you know that have that? They don't, and there's a reason, because your computer doesn't have it either. And on the other end of this cable is a three pole, three and a half mil jack. Now I have scoured through every other review of this keyboard. Nobody has picked up on this fact. You plug a headset into this, you can either plug in the headphones or the microphone. And then on the other end, you can either plug it into your headphone jack or your microphone jack. You cannot have both unless you go out and you buy lots of adapters. So you would need a single three, uh, sorry, two headphone and microphones into a single three pole for this end. And then on the other end, you need a three pole splitter to go from a three pole out to two. Um, I've actually asked Thermaltake about this. 
I've chased them up for the last few weeks, never had an answer. So, going to have to give it a bit of a slating for that because personally I think it's a massive oversight. Film takes own headsets, don't even plug into this. Why? Guys, let me know what your thoughts are on using this. Okay, yes. This end, I could just about understand. Um, if they were to give you a pair of leads on the other end and maybe include an adapter to use a standard headset on this end. But as it is, I can't even plug this into my computer and use a headset. Even if I had an adapter for this end, I still can't plug it into my computer. I can plug one or the other end. Why? Makes no sense at all. But on the whole, it's quite a nice looking keyboard. It's very well built. The RGB, now I've got quite bright studio lights in here, so this doesn't look the brightest, but the lighting on this is probably one of the brightest keyboards I've seen so far. Now, the switches on this are Cherry speed switches, okay, silver speed switches. That is on this particular keyboard. However, it is available in three, two other options. Weirdly, it's available with Razer Greens. Hmm. And it's also available in Cherry MX Blues for that sort of clicky one. Um, I do believe that the blue ones don't appear to be as easy to get a hold of, and the Razer Greens is a new one that will be coming out shortly. So this particular one here I have is Cherry uh, MX Speed Switches, silver ones. I quite like them. Me personally, I've always been a red fan. Cherry MX Reds. Speed ones are basically an MX Red, but with a much lower actuation point. But uh, switch choices is always personal preference. Um, but on the whole, yeah, it's a nice looking keyboard. It's incredibly functional. It does have a lot of gimmicks, shall we say. Um, first of all, we've got Amazon Alexa support. Tried it. Couldn't get anything to work out of that one. Um, again, it's just a gimmick. Also, you can actually use your phone with the included iTake apps, and you can use your phone as a virtual keyboard. Why, I don't know. You can also use your phone as a virtual con gaming controller. I tried it. It worked. Would I ever use it? No. It's just... It's one thing I must admit Thermal Take are quite good at, and that is throwing in just little toys. It's it's a nice bit of marketing. It's fun to play with for about 30 seconds. Then you'll either pick your keyboard and mouse up or you'll pick up an Xbox controller. But hey, it's an option, it's there. You never know, you could have one Xbox controller and a mate around and want to play co-op on a particular game. You could do it that way around, I suppose. But yeah, little gimmick. Um, but the actual keyboard itself, is great. The other thing that lets this down, bar that really irritating headset jack, is unfortunately the software. Now, um, the software works, it does do its job, but my biggest irritant with it is I have to install another piece of software. This does not work with um, Thermaltake's standard RGB software. You have to install the TT iTake or whatever software it is, and it does the job you can assign all the different keys, you can create macros and things like that, you can change all the lights and things like that. But it's just not, it just doesn't feel polished. I mean, I'm using it on a 4K screen and it's everything, a lot of it's all blurry, all the text is blurry and things like that. It's just lacking its polishedness, shall we say. Now, obviously Thermaltake have worked with Razer with this keyboard, hence it's available with Razer Greens. And I almost wish they'd just taken the Razer Synapse software. The Razer Synapse software is, without a doubt, one of the best bits of software I've used for any of these RGB sort of ecosystems. Um, the Thermal Tape one, it works, it does do what it wants, and I did manage to get it to set up to be how I liked it, um, which isn't actually lots of RGB, but this was just to show it off. So it does do the job, it's just, it just feels a little bit unpolished. So I'm not gonna deduct too much away from it, because it does do its job. but. It just feels like it could be refined. Um, you are actually meant to be able to connect this keyboard with Razer's Synapse via their uh, Connect module. I tried, I had no luck. I installed this software, I installed the normal Thermaltake software. I managed to get it to talk to the software but never managed to get the keyboard to show up under Razer and never managed to change it. I did spend a little time, I didn't want to spend too much time because at the end of the day, the Thermaltake software has more options for this particular keyboard. The Thermaltake software, it does do the job, it's just a little bit clunky. But yeah, overall, as a keyboard, I actually quite liked it. Um, it's got a few different adjustment options. You've got uh, some adjustable feet on the back, 
and you have two levels of adjustment. You've got a sort of like a, a flat keyboard, which still has some rise. I do find this keyboard, it's got quite a high sort of, I think the best way to describe it is sort of like desk to key top. It's got quite, quite a large height and there's no wrist rest or anything included. Let's just bring this keyboard around. Um, and it is, it does feel a little bit high from the desk. A wrist rest would have been a really nice inclusion. Where this is, I mean, you're a bit like that, as standard. Now, I like my keyboards raised all the way up and in the raised position, it's a lot more comfortable, but still, I feel like my wrists are a bit low compared to the keycaps. There's a good sort of inch or so of height. Um, I'm used to much slimmer keyboards, but keyboards, as I always say, are down to personal preference. Now, one thing you can do if you want to completely ignore the Thermaltake software, you can actually sort of choose some light effects from within the keyboard. If you haven't got the software installed, you do have a few options. We've just changed that to reaction. Um, you can choose colors, there we go. Um, different lighting effects, things like that. I'm setting things off in the background here. And you can actually do all of that from with it within it. So you don't have to use the thermal day software. The keyboard itself though is great. I really like it. This LED bar around the outside is quite cool. The only other keyboard I've ever seen with that on, I might be wrong, there's probably been others, but was the 200 pound Razer Huntsman Elite. And this does have a lot of those features. Okay, different switches. We've got Cherry Speed Silvers rather than the Opto Mechanicals, but it's got a nice scroll wheel, it's got some nice buttons. I'm actually going to give it, it, it's a tricky one. It's a lovely keyboard, but it's got two really irritating fundamental flaws. The headset switch, the headset switch, headset socket, is effectively useless. And the software is a little bit clunky. And at this price point, I think you should be getting a completely smooth experience when it comes to the software, because that at the end of the day makes the RGB ecosystems. It doesn't matter how good the physical product is when the software is useless. This one isn't useless, but it's clunky. Um, and it's a little bit of a shame to see because the RGB software for their fans and things like that, it's actually really nice and easy to use. This one, it was just a little bit mm, clunky. <laughs> exactly that. Like you can't select all of this in one go and change it. You can select this bit and you can select the bar as different things. They are all per key, but you cannot work on all of it at once. So you have to sit there and design this bit. Then you have to change over to the outside bar and then change that to little things like that. It's not the end of the world, but it was just a little bit of an irritant. So I think that's about it for today. We've covered pretty much everything this keyboard's got. It is a nice keyboard. It's got a couple of little flaws. That headset socket is really irritating. It, it, it just grinds, I just think. Come on, it's a 160 pound keyboard. Something like that shouldn't have been overseen. The fact I can't plug in a headset makes that socket pretty much useless. So if you are going to be definitely wanting to use this socket, do bear in mind you are gonna to have to go out and buy some adapters. I mean, it's not the end of the world. If this was a cheap keyboard, I'd have gone, yeah, okay, but it's not. It's 160 quid. At 160 quid, I expect them to have thought about little things like that. The software, it does the job. That's about it, it does the job. It's nothing to write home about. But on the whole, it is a really nice keyboard. I'm gonna give it one thumb up. It's not It's not a two thumbs up keyboard. It's a great bit of hardware. It's let down a little bit though. I am gonna put some links as to where you can buy one of these down below because it is available in black it is available in titanium and it is available in a couple of different switch options. So we'll put a link down below as to where you can grab them. And that is about it for today, guys. So Thermosate Level 20 RGB Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. It's a one thumb. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Um, I'm not going to say it is horrendous because it is a lovely bit of hardware. Just not quite polished. And on that note, guys, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Not a problem. If you have any comments, recommendations, suggestions, leave it down below. I always take the, my time to answer all of your questions and everything. And if you want to see more of me, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, because I am here every Saturday, 6 p.m. British time. So there we go. If you want to see more of me, I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.